Hello, this is Rupinder Syal and welcome to Spartan Tutorials. Today we are going to talk about Arabinose Operon. Arabinose Operon is one of the standard models of understanding regulation of gene expression. So it is right there in comparison with Lac Operon and Trip Operon, so Tryptophan Operon. And this was one of the main operons discovered where there was the same protein acting as an activator as well as a repressor. And an important concept of DNA looping was also discovered using studies on Arabinose operon, which turned out to be a very general mechanism for regulating genes. So let's discuss Arabinose operon. Now, arabinose is a pentose sugar, so it is a carbohydrate, it has 5 carbon backbone and there are multiple genes which encode proteins involved in importing arabinose into the cell as well as metabolizing it into desilulose 5-phosphate so it can enter the central pathways like hexose monophosphate shunt. So here we have the different proteins. So let's introduce the cast of characters first. So we have the ARA C protein. This is the activator slash repressor as we will see very soon. This is one operon, ARA B, ARA A and ARA D. This is the contiguous number of genes, three genes linked together which give rise to a polycystronic mRNA. So one mRNA which contains the coding information for all the three genes. So all three proteins are produced simultaneously. ARAC also regulates the promoters which are responsible for turning on the expression of ARA E gene as well as ARA F, G and H genes. These genes are located elsewhere in the bacterial genome. It's all one chromosome, but still they are located far away. They are not contiguous with the ARA B, A and D genes. So the proteins encoded by ARA F, ARA G and ARA H are involved in uptake of arabinose from the outer environment. So here we have the overall general schematic. We have L arabinose outside the cell. It is imported by the complex of ARA F, G and H. ARA E is also involved. It brings in L arabinose inside the cell. And then with ARA A, B and D proteins, these are enzymes, they convert it finally to xylulose 5-phosphate. And xylulose phosphate is taken to hexose monophosphate shunt, okay, HMP pathway. Okay, so it is one of the central pathways of metabolism. Now, arabinose operon needs to be regulated just like LAC operon, just like trip operon, because the cells don't want to expend energy in making these enzymes, making these transporters if there is no need. So if glucose is abundant or some other carbon source is abundant, they don't want to spend energy on making these ARA B, ARA A, D proteins. So that's what the regulation is about. Now how does it go about doing that? Now ARA C which is the regulator, it is a homodimer. And you can see it has a C-terminal DNA binding domain and an N-terminal arabinose binding pocket as well as dimerization domain. So the dimerization domain as well as arabinose binding pocket, they are both located in the N-terminus and the C-terminus has DNA binding domain. Now in absence of arabinose, what happens is this ARA C protein binds to this ARA I region Okay, which is just upstream of the promoter of the ARA B, A and D genes. And it also binds to a distant operator called O2, which is located a little bit far away. And this binding by this dimer of ARA C the ARA C dimer makes a DNA loop here. And this loop formation is actually facilitated by the absence of arabinose in the arabinose binding pocket of ARA C. So that loop formation 
precludes and obstructs transcription it represses transcription so the arabinose operon is not synthesized whereas in the presence of arabinose the situation is very very different here the loop formation is totally excluded it is totally inhibited and with the binding of arabinose as you can see here in red the dimers they both bind to the ara i region so two dna sequences just upstream of the promoter of the era a b and d genes and they help in recruitment of rna polymerase and this starts the arabinose operon now i would also like to mention that just like lac operon it is also subject to positive regulation by catabolite activator protein which is activated by binding of cyclic amp so cyclic amp as you know it is synthesized when there is very less amount of glucose in the cell it is kind of a hunger signal so that exerts positive regulation on this operon now arabinose operon has been very useful in discovering these basic mechanisms of gene regulation and it has also found use in biotechnology and recombinant dna technology also because era operon and its control elements can be used to induce genes which are toxic to the cell because we don't want even a little bit of leaky expression one of the problems with many plasmid vectors and many cloned genes is that there is leaky expression so this leaky expression basically means that the protein products are synthesized at very low levels now if these are uh, not harmful to the cell it's fine if there are a couple of molecules of them in the cell but if these are toxins or something which promotes cell death or reduces cell viability then we don't want any leaky expression and arabinose operon is very good at very high levels of induction and very low levels of protein expression at uninduced levels so it is very good for uh expressing genes which are toxic to the cell so that's my discussion of arabinose operon i hope you found this information useful let me know if you have any co comments or questions about this uh concept if you did like the video please give it a thumbs up till the next time we meet take care and bye bye